Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have 3 to the power x times 5 to the power x cubed equals 15. We've done similar problems before, but this one has x cubed in the exponent. So it's going to be different. First of all, you probably noticed that x equals 1 works, right? Nice. But is that it? Are there any other solutions? Let's find out. I'll be presenting two methods, even though one of the methods could be incomplete because we're going to go through the same thing pretty much at the end. But let's start with the first method. So I'm going to go ahead and use the properties of exponents and write the 15 as 3 times 5. And then I want to put the 3's together on one side and 5's on the other side so that I can use again the properties of exponents and compare these two exponentials. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 3 here. That's going to give us a 1. And divide by 5 to the power x cubed here. And this is going to give us 1. So now we end up with 3 to the power, since this is 3 to the first power, and this is 5 to the first power. 3 to the power x minus 1 equals 5 to the power 1 minus x cubed. Awesome. This is good because you can hopefully clearly see that x equals 1 is going to satisfy. Do you see what I see? Hopefully you do. So you're going to see that 3 to the 0 is 5 to the 0, right? What else? Here's the thing. This way of writing these two exponentials actually makes it a lot easier because what I can do is basically just write the 5 to the power 1 minus x cubed as 5 to the power with a negative sign, x cubed minus 1, because the opposite of 1 minus x cubed is x cubed minus 1, right? And then factoring out the x minus 1, that's going to give us x squared plus x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now notice that I can raise both sides to the power 1 over x minus 1. In other words, I can cancel out x minus 1 from both sides when they're in the exponent. But notice x does not equal 1 at this point, right? Otherwise, I can't do it because it's division by 0. Uh-oh, not defined, well defined. Now, we end up with something like this. 5 to the power negative of x squared plus x plus 1 equals a positive 3. I don't like the negative power in front of a huge radical. Let's go ahead and get rid of that and raise both sides to the power negative 1, which will negate the powers on both sides. And now we got a positive thing. And at this point, we can go ahead and turn this into a quadratic equation. Not a cubic because we got rid of the linear term. Great. Now we're going to ln both sides. Let's do it. ln here and ln here. What that does is, and by the way, this plus sign is kind of redundant, but anyways, or unnecessary. Bring this to the front. You get x squared plus x plus 1 times ln 5 equals ln 3 to the power of negative 1, which can be written as negative ln 3, or you can write it as ln 1 third. Same thing, right? Great. What do we do next? Well, this can be turned into a quadratic equation easily. Distribute, you're going to get ln 5, and then you're going to get another ln 5. I'll show you what that's going to look like in a little bit. And then you're going to get ln 5 plus ln 3. So it's going to be, I probably need a little, little room there, plus ln 5, and then add this, and you're going to get plus ln 3. And why did I leave those blank? Because I'm going to put the x squared here and the x here. Do you now see that this is quadratic in x, right? If I didn't get rid of the x minus 1, this would be cubic. Of course, you can solve it with a cubic formula, but hey, that's painful, right? Well, even this quadratic is going to be some work. How do you solve it? Quadratic formula, of course, right? What else can you do? You can also do completing the square, but I don't recommend. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Now, ln5 plus ln3, you can write as ln15 or just leave it like that. I guess this is uh, a little better, over 2a, which is 2ln5. a is the coefficient of x squared. Got it? 
Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the discriminant because that's the most important part. That tells us how many real solutions we have, right? And the discriminant is under the radical, so it is ln5 squared minus 4 times ln5 times ln5 plus ln3. Forgot the plus sign, plus ln3. If you hear any noise, those are my cats. They just like to play with the blinds. Anyways, if you distribute, what happens? You get something like this, ln5 squared minus 4 times ln5 squared. Uh-oh, we already got a negative term. And then minus 4 ln5 times ln3. Because that's going to be basically uh, negative times a positive, And that's going to end up being a negative, right? Okay, cool. Now, what do we do with this? Well, take a look. This is negative and you're subtracting something positive from it, that's definitely going to be neg negative. So our discriminant is less than zero, which means we have no real solutions. Make sense? I hope it does. So can we find the complex solutions, though? Absolutely. Uh, if you write the square root of this expression, which is the discriminant, so you can kind of write it as follows. Let me see if I can simplify this a little bit. Negative 3 times ln 5 squared minus 4 ln 5 ln 3 and then I can probably just pull out a negative ln 5 and then inside 3 ln 5 plus 4 ln 3 right that's what I get if you square root this obviously the minus sign will produce i so you're gonna have something that looks like this x equals negative ln 5 plus minus the square root of ln5 times 3 ln5 plus 4 ln3, because we factored it, right, times i, all over 2 ln5. And when you distribute it, you're going to get something like x equals negative 1 half as the real part, and as the imaginary part, you're going to be getting something like this. Square root of ln5 times 3 ln5 plus 4 ln3 over 2 ln5 multiply by i. And that's going to be the imaginary part. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the second method real quick because we've already gone through so much pain, right? We don't really need to repeat the, these steps, but I'll just give you the idea. Now, you can go ahead and directly ln both sides. Remember, with our first uh, method, we kind of separated the powers of 3 and 5, but this time you're going to get something like this, ln 3 to the x plus ln 5 to the x cubed equals ln 3 plus ln 5 and then now you can go ahead and move these to the front x ln 3 plus x cubed ln 5 equals ln 3 plus ln 5 and by comparing the coefficients of ln 3 and ln 5 you deduce that x equals 1 works but that doesn't mean all the solutions but guess what using Vieta's formulas you can go ahead and find the sum of the other two roots and their product and hopefully you can construct a quadratic equation from here. Another method would be, since you know that x equals 1 works, right, then you can go ahead and divide this cubic polynomial, of course put it in the proper form, by x minus 1, and good luck with that. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.